Welcome to Security Nation, an ESA podcast that brings you the voice of electronic security and life safety. We bring on security pros to discuss the latest industry happenings, new technology, and best practices, telling your story to become the ever-present voice in an ever-changing industry. I'd like to introduce this episode's guest. We have Michelle Youngblatt, Chief Knowledge Officer at the Electronic Security Association. Michelle leads the strategic growth of the association's training, certification, and technology initiatives. This includes the creation, management, coordination, and execution of all training and certification strategies for the association. In addition, Michelle has also provided the executive decision-making for the association's technology initiatives and ensures the systems are in place and are effectively used, profitable, and secure. Uh, Since her arrival at ESA, Michelle has led the overhaul of the ESA National Training School to allow students and companies the ability to manage their training based on their needs and schedules and provide them services that are suited to their unique business procedures. She has worked with subject matter experts to develop career paths and certification tracks for individuals looking to solidify their growth potential. So, Michelle, thanks for coming on the podcast today. Thanks for having me, Hannah. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously you do a lot of things over here at ESA, um, but for those who may not know you or kind of know about your role or background in the industry, uh, would you be able to share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, hard to believe uh, in November or December, I guess it's December, I would I will be with ESA 10 years now. So uh it's flown by. Uh, I look back and think it's been so fast, but then I also look back and see of all the things that we've had the opportunity to have an impact on. So it's certainly been a fun ride. Uh, I've been, um, before ESA, I worked in higher education. So I, my role has always been building education programs. And so building education programs from a a couple different ways. So with building them from curriculum development and, but then also uh, my career pivoted because I I was a computer teacher. So I taught computers Mm. at the college level uh, when I was uh, in my mid to late twenties. And uh, then I uh, took that technology knowledge I had and then learned how to develop online curriculum and run those programs and uh, develop them from the ground up. So, and then from there, I taught faculty how to do that same thing, right? So to use technology in teaching. So those two things are my passion and where I have uh, really evolved to where I am today to run uh, education and technology for the association. So uh, every day is a new challenge and a new excitement. So, mm-hmm. Oh, that's fabulous. I could have definitely used probably one of your classes when I got started <laughs> in my career. I was so uh, technologically illiterate. Um, so I don't know. That's awesome. I actually personally, even though I work with you, I don't think I knew your extensive background in education. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it spans from Canada to here in Texas. So I started teaching Canada and then moved to Texas. So. Yeah. Interesting. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So um, in your bio that I read off, it, it mentioned uh, how you basically took the lead over uh, basically initiating ESA's National Training School. Uh, would you be able to share with our listeners uh, what our training school is and what it's about? Absolutely. So the the school itself is branded as the National Training School. Um, it is sometimes it gets confusing because the National Training School is the Electronic Security Association. It, it is one and the same. It's really just a department of the association and uh, it is how we deliver and offer education and training to our members and non-members. So basically the entire universe of those who are in the electronic security field. Uh, and it started out as uh, being outsourced in, uh, it was a, uh, we had a, a group of folks that ran it for us, and it was uh, out kind of in another location from the association. Uh, when I came on board, we brought it back in-house. It was, it was put in-house, and so then it just became more, even more embedded in the association and what our mission is. So the association, the the training school itself, really what we do is we develop 
training that is needed by the uh, community that we serve. And when I say that, how do we develop that and that's, and, and that's needed, we work very closely with our membership team, our, our membership uh, base to hear from them what they need for training. And we do that using an education committee. That is one of the core methods we do that. So we have an education committee that I think is made up of right now maybe 12 to 15 people that represent various sectors of the industry and using their insights and the, uh, we learn from them what training we need to have out there. Uh, back in 1985, when the, the school started, the, this whole training department started, uh, it was one course. It was introduction. It was basic, fundamental, 24-hour class that uh, was really uh, – driven by trying to help a specific state who was looking at requiring training as mm. part of to get a license saying okay let us do build that for you and we'll help advise you state and i believe the state was louisiana at the time to say what is best what should be best so now fast forward all these years later uh, it has so uh, the train school has expanded. We have well over a hundred classes that we offer. So we went from one to now well over a hundred, and the realm of the training has changed to be not just intrusion based. So the technical um, components of installing an intrusion system, it really uh, we do all the way everything from video to access control to codes and standards. And now we uh, also do, we have several classes on networking, uh, which is essentially the backbone now of any, uh, many of our systems, the systems that are out there and being installed. So networking, technology, um, IP, and mm. then uh, our latest kind of realm is a lot of sales training and workforce essentials, we're calling it. So those types of con the classes that, uh, people need any employee of any company needs in order to be a productive um, employee. So uh, I think of that as, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to, I'll, I'll not swear too much, but basically not to be an a-hole <laughs> at work and how to get along with others and be a real quality team player amongst your team. Uh, and so that's a, some of the newest content we have developed. So, uh, and those are really taking off. There are so many companies looking to us to help them, not just with the technical training, but for the whole employee. How do we train the whole employee? So I, I could go on and on about what the uh, National Training School is. It's it's just it's so many things today to different companies, whether it's no. somebody needs a license and they need specific training or they are um, needing refresher training or they're a new hire uh, or it, it, a lot of it or, or they're looking into um, they're getting promoted into a new role such as a service role. Um, and then they need, okay, I need more of this, or they want a new license to get a new job, uh, you know, in the fire world, let's say, for example, they want to take on now fire alarm systems. So, so yeah, whole host of things, whole host of topics, but uh, the bottom line for me and how I lead the team is just, we want to be nimble. We want to listen to what our audience needs and we want to be able to have um, the flexibility to quickly pivot and create what our audience needs. Yeah, no, like from hearing you, you know, describe what NTS is, it kind of seems like it's it's being designed to scale not only with the individual and their mm -hmm. personal training needs, you know, if they get promoted or change courses, uh, but also a company itself. So if it adds on a different vertical, they go into the fire realm or, or you know, or intrusion, whatever, if they start adding on different verticals, uh, they're also supported um, as a whole, right? As an organization. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you you summed it up very well of what we're trying to achieve today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, so then you know what? Why would an integrator uh, go with uh, ESA, NTS versus other options? Uh, what would you say are some of the main things that sets it apart? Yeah, I love those questions because something that. Um, 
many of us at the Electronic Security Association and our education committee and our board of directors. So the the folks that help us make decisions here on which strategy and direction to go to. What many of us had have had to kind of understand in the last, let's say, five years is that the our training program has competitors and meaning, which is good because people want we we Consumers should be able to make decisions and have a choice out there. Um, and that's really, there's been more and more competition out there for the association's training uh, in the last five years. So mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not afraid of competition. And if anything, I think it's really made us stronger and it helps us hone in why people should choose us. And the one of the biggest components, I think that uh, one of the, the biggest answer I have for that question is, because we are the trade association that represents the industry. Uh, Mm -hmm. Unlike some other entities that are out there, they are for profits. And that for profit, if somebody, if you're gonna go buy training from them, that money that they, that you're paying for that training is going back into the for-profit organization or company. Uh, and you have no control over where that goes, right? So as a buyer, you don't know what, if it, that's somebody's vacation, is that extra bonuses for the person, the leadership right. or, or where's the money really going? What I love about supporting the association is, is that, we work for our members that all all that we are doing is to support the membership it and it's 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 public what we do and where our revenue goes so that that's one of the big reasons is by buying training from us it's another way that you a company owner is supporting the you know the the association and the 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 industry as a whole Mm. so where does that money go a lot of what we do is advocacy so working to see what rules and regulations are coming up and and what should be being changed so we can help you know honor what the needs are of our members when it comes to advocacy and government relations uh, then other just bringing you good information and content such as this wonderful podcast you've developed Hannah so um, yeah so that it's all back intrinsically back into the industry that's why the other one uh, huge thing that I think stands us apart from our competitors is is our content. And not just because we have those 100 classes and they can say all these topics. Many other competitors have a variety of topics that we do, or you can find other competitors that have those topics. But what I love about our content is it comes from such a wide array of experts. Mm. Uh, I it's nobody on my team that is writing content. Well, I say they they might write it, but it's more of they're being told from experts in the field what is the best content. And that's not just one expert. It's not three experts. It's we have well over 100 experts that help us on developing and reviewing our content. So because of our membership base and the, the, the relationships we have with our community, we can, I can call up any company pretty much any day and say, hey, I need your help. Can you review this content, this paragraph, this module, and tell us what's wrong with it or what we need to do better uh, mm. with it? And that's what I love about um, is it, what makes us unique and stands out is that we have so many subject matter experts that help us evolve and make sure we're offering the right thing. And I can't say that there is any direct competitor that has that same advantage. So that those are some of my two big ones is just supporting the industry. And then our, 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 our subject matter experts, our instructors, which is, is what makes us really stand apart. So Gotcha. So you would say that uh, NTS's education programming is really peer driven. It's not like you're off on this lone island, just assuming, you know, and just meeting the basic requirements. You actually have, like you were saying, subject matter experts, Mm -hmm. people that you can call up and verify and make sure the examples and the material is actually realistic and applicable and very relevant. Uh, Yeah, for sure. And, And those same people come to us and say, you know, hey, you know, ESA, you should be doing more on this area, you mm. know, and helping us evolve. And, and and many times they're like, darn it, I shouldn't have said that because they know I'll, we'll go back to them and be like, 
hey, yeah, that's great, <laughs> but can you help us? Can you give us some content or any ideas you have for us to build some of these uh, these modules and, and, and whatnot? So, um, and the other aspect is that from, you know, why choose us is we have a team of people um, that allow us to be very nimble in what we do. So if we have a company, mm -hmm. which pretty much happens on a daily basis, reach out to us and say, hey, you know, I'm looking at my other screen here and there's an email that just came in that is like, what do we need to do for CEUs in Washington? Can you help us when it comes to reporting those CEUs? And immediately my team knew exactly what to do and how to get them what the rules for what they need to do to, to submit their CEUs to Washington and to what agency. And so hmm. that's just one example of the, the resources we have available. We're not just here to sell you our training. We're here to help you utilize that training in order to stay in compliance or to get the most out of it. So, uh, but yeah, we have a team of people that just know that stuff and can help you answer any of those questions. So, and, uh, and yeah. unlike some other, you know, uh, competitors, it's, we want to be there to help you. And the service component of my, uh, is one thing that we really instill in, in any ESA employee is we work for our members and we're here to help you that our customer along the way. So, yep. Yeah. So like not a set it up, set it and forget it model. We actually have a support staff specifically for our training. Absolutely. Yeah. Training and, and what, how can we help you make them and, and be in compliance with any agency that's out there? Mm -hmm. That's great. I, I think you mentioned this uh, earlier and I kind of wanted to go back to it. Uh, like training as a service, um, how we offer not just, you know, certifications and CEUs, we also offer, you know, operations and sales uh, training material. Can you kind of go over what task training as a service is? Yeah, absolutely. So, gosh, a few years ago in our some of our board meetings and other meetings, and it could have been at a bar, who knows where it was, but there was a lot of different times <laughs> this came up as a subject. And it was, we heard from our uh, volunteers, so those uh, committee members, board members, uh, just listening to them and their own pain points when it comes to running their companies was, you know, I'm lucky if I can find a new employee or if I have this rock star employee um, or I can really see potential in this employee. They're like, I, I don't have the time to figure out what training or what professional development that person should have in order for a to kind of keep them as an engaged employee, you know, to give them a promotional path uh, right. for that. You know, that's the stickiness you need of those solid a player uh, employees and team members you have. So as we really kind of evolve the conversations, it's like, gosh, we really need to develop something for our members because everybody we talk to, Hiring was a challenge, but mm -hmm. it, it was more of what these folks were saying. It's like, okay, I got them. Now what do I do with them to keep them on this consistent path? And so that's, we uh, put together a task force. Uh, we flew people into Dallas for a few days. So they were ops managers, operation field managers for several companies. I think we had 10 different companies being representative of different shapes and sizes. And we picked their brain for those couple of days and essentially built out a curriculum to say what, how many, not only the number of hours and how long should the training, tr the training pathway be, but what content do you think right. this should be required training? Should this be elective training? So what we've put together is the training as a service program. And it's, I like to think of it as almost like when if it, you know, you go into college or even, gosh, my daughter's starting ninth grade on Tuesday. Um, one thing that you get these academic advisors. So we've all had this experience. If you've been in any educational institution, it's like, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? Or what's your end goal, basically? Well, here, let us help you make a path of how you get to that end goal. And so we consult with the company and the, the managers um, to say, what type of employees do you have? What's their different career path opportunities within your company? So that's, you know, what channels, what, what are you selling? What are you installing? What products? Um, and then from there, we will work with you and, and we look at the state where, what regions are you in? So what compliance issues do you have to make sure you're um, 
you know, in line with. And then we build a career path for those folks. And we have special pricing set up. So that's training as a service. So the training we build in the components and the service comes in by the hand, how we are there with those managers along the way to say, hey, here's the program. You help us build it advise them, consult them. Once it's built, then we give those managers administrative access to the program. So it's it's our learning management platform, basically, so they can see how their employees are, uh, you know, completing it, having success in it, or not success, most of success. Mm-hmm. But, and then guide, they can be there to help nudge those folks along on those pathways. And most of these companies are tying in, um, promotions, so new pay raises. So once they hit this threshold or this benchmark, then, oh, they get a new title, a new, you know, rate, that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff. So that, that's what TOS is. It, uh, I, I love to have conversations to with people about it, um, because putting it on paper is hard to understand because it is such a customized program, depending on the company. So, um, but yeah, it is, it's, we have more and more companies. That's most of the conversations we're having these days are for companies who really want that type of solution versus, oh no, just give me that level one class and and, and we're good. They're realizing mm-hmm. this is an ongoing need uh, for most of their employees. And, and the cool thing, we also have a sales uh, career path. So it's not just for the technicians. We also have a career path for the sales folks. Hmm. Um, that are selling the products and the and the projects, so we can help build programs for that as well. Wow, that's really interesting. As you were talking, I was reminded about this 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 study that I was reading a few months ago, where universities uh, decided to do this study where basically they would kind of do what you were describing uh, with our goal, like having something where you kind of list out what your career path is and what your goals are and having a curriculum to kind of hold your hand, except it was more uh, universities were doing it just very broad level. Like what is your goal of university in general? Mm. And uh, basically had these students do basic writing assignments on what their vision or goal or mission of university was. Mm. And it was incredible. Uh, They compared it to other universities and almost immediately, I think it, it decreased the dropout rate by 40%. Uh, just having a basic uh, goal and vision mm-hmm. for what their you know future would be immediately made a huge difference in them choosing to stay with university. I almost wonder if, I don't know, it would be really cool if we could find a way, I don't know how, but do some kind of case study. Yeah, that would be. You know, a parks research or something where we could team up and see, uh, you know, does it make a difference in people's uh, motivation? to get promotions or choose uh, different, you know, uh, roles within your business? Mm-hmm. Or does it change your attention over time? Yeah. People getting involved in uh, in some kind of program or training programming. Right, right. And, and that's and what your you know, that research study uh, you you read about is actually it's very it's being talked about a lot in the human resources realm. So right. part of my role um, and much of the work I do for the association, I tap in a lot to the Society for Human Resource Managers. It's a shortcut for SHRM. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much of so I look to them a lot and what they're publishing out there just because my role is to build programs that support companies and their people. So I that's why I tap into Society for Human Resource Management and not so much so that I can figure out like the benefit packages or that type right. of stuff, but it's really how, what are people doing and companies doing that are ma- allowing them to be more successful with uh, building teams that are engaged and happy. Uh, training has always been a component of that, but it's not been necessarily, it's almost been this like chunk over here, like, oh, don't forget to train them and don't, you know, right. that kind of stuff where now, as you're saying, you know, these programs are finding, you have to embed them into the entire culture of your organization. And that's where, um, you know, folks are realizing success in retaining those A players 
because building a training as a service program or a career path program for them is you're showing that employee that you're invested in them, that you want to listen first you're listening to what they want as as you know what they consider be a successful career path and then you're working with them to build it let me work let's work together and build this pathway and it includes training but it includes benefit packages and raises and uh, could be other fun things like reward programs you know that if they achieve this not only do they get a raise but maybe they get more paid time off or uh, just different examples but they're really that that's really what uh, is being investigated and invested in 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 any human resource uh, role is we need to look at the full person, that full employee of how we meet their needs, um, especially with all that. If we look back in the past two years, all the, you know, challenges every individual on this planet has faced, you know, of yeah. different challenges. So it's really shaken the world up a lot. So, but yeah, so yeah, that's, it's, it all intertwines with just happy companies, equal happy people and vice versa. Absolutely. I mean, I think, having something tangible really does make a difference. I mean, I think it's easy to assume that people are going to, uh, I don't know, I think it might be unrealistic to, to assume that your employees know that you have a plan for them. Because uh, <laughs> uh, especially, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially when, uh, like you were saying, when it feels like the sky is falling all around, um, if you don't feel like your employer has some kind of plan, um, I don't know. You just you can't mm -hmm. assume too much. And so having something tangible like, no, we actually do have a plan. We do have support structures in place. We're not going we're going to do everything we can to not allow you to fall through the net. Um, we have a safety net, just, yep. so you know, I think is yep. huge. And I mean, uh, like, you know, we're kind of talking about it, the great resignation. I think that's been one of the big things that has been uh I don't know what I, what word, um, haunting, yeah. <laughs> haunting the world and our industry mm -hmm. is not immune to it. So would you then say that NTS is a possible solution to the great resignation? Yeah, absolutely. Because of all these reasons we just talked about, right? So that you're, mm -hmm. you're creating, um, this very direct relationship with your employees right. that, you know, allows them to see their future. Um, and, and, you know, I can't say that it, it's it's the magic sauce or, right. or the magic bandaid for any of the, the great resignation problems, because I think if anybody looks at any of the research with the great resignation, people are making changes in their careers or their lives for a whole host of reasons. It's now. multifaceted. Yeah. And, and to put your finger on one or, you know, two things, it's 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 really hard. Um, I know I've done hours of research trying to say, well, where did all the employees go? Why right. do I have such a hard time flying these days? Where <laughs> where are all the pilots? <laughs> yeah. right. So I, I look at all that as well, and, and it, it's like, where did they go? Um, and nobody has the real strong answer about where or why they went where they went. So, But I, I everything that I have been reading and that I'm hearing from our companies and our customers is that this is something that they want to invest in their employees to show them value and and so they don't have them leave them so that yeah no i totally i totally hear that mm -hmm. so one question i like to ask on the podcast is uh in your opinion what do you think is our industry's current biggest challenge and uh what is esa's role in facing that challenge so with my role, I not only do I, um, you know, with, you know, if you look at on paper what I do each day, uh, it I don't I, I don't get much of an opportunity to talk as much to customers as I want because, you know, I have a team that deals with like does all the support customers and 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 I love it when they're like, hey Michelle, can you cover the phones for an hour? And I'm like, ha yes I can because <laughs> I love to get to talk to people again and and. Uh, where I do get to talk to a lot of people is our events and building mm. our events. And what I do with that is I have to talk to um, a lot of company owners through our advisory group or education group and say, okay, what, what do you think are the biggest challenges out there? Uh, so that we can bring subject matter experts in to help solve those. And, and really 
one of the biggest, uh, you know, it ties right back to this conversation is people. The biggest challenge of this industry is people. Um, and it's, it's not unlike other industries. I, uh, working with, um, recently, just about two weeks ago, I was in uh, Indianapolis and I visited with a couple other folks at ESA and another one of our partners, a uh, community school, a community college, Ivy Tech. And Ivy Tech is a huge, has a huge footprint in Indy, Indiana, Indiana. And we got to spend a lot of time with their provost and to hear what, you know, what has happened, where they're trying to pivot mm. in how they support companies in that, you know, that hire their students. And obviously that's people and finding the people and being able to understand um, what, how do you, like, what do those people need to attract them? So uh, that is something I'm hearing from our education advisors and the company owners from schools, these tech schools that I'm having conversations with. But then also I hear it um, when I'm at the event and I sit, at, I make a point of sitting with people that I don't know lots of times at tables and hearing them, you know, the discussions they're having. And I just, I really think our industry, this industry needs to um, pay attention more to what their people are saying about their needs yeah. uh, in order to be happy employees and how to attract them. So it's just such a, it's always been a passion of mine, but now seeing this big challenge of finding the right people and people in general, um, even ESA, our, you know, we just had a team meeting today and it was really important for us as, you know, to make it a fun, engaging meeting and, and look to ways about where we just don't data dump on people or set right. expectations on our team, but try and find ways to make this a fun place to work. And, and that's, um, but that, that's the biggest challenge I'm seeing. And other people might've said technology, but um, you know, if you ask them technology and, and don't get me wrong, technology is huge, but it's something people we've had to deal with for many years now. It's just technology, at least the 10 years I've been involved in the industry, technology has always been like, Oh, it's changing so fast. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, if you're not paying attention to that or you don't think that's a problem or something you've had to adapt to, then, you know, you're about five, ten years behind. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, but it is. But nonetheless, I think just people is the big is 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 the biggest challenge of the of this industry at this point in time. No, I agree. I, mm. I think that's great. So we're actually getting close to hitting time already. Okay. Uh, we were covered a lot that I wanted to cover. Mm -hmm. uh, but one question I wanted to ask um, was, what would you say to someone who is considering ESA membership but hasn't uh, hasn't gone for you, hasn't pulled the trigger? Yeah. So one of the the biggest things is to talk to our member membership specialists because they have some super cool tools at their fingertips that and and really specific questions that they can ask you about you know what are you normally spending on x or y and they'll break it down and they have these calculators at their fingertips to show you how you know, there are savings that we can offer, ESA can offer you that would save you money and, and really tie it down to your bottom line. So that that's really what I would suggest because for, you know, me doing training and being responsible for training, I'm always like, oh, sure you save money on training. But that's only part of what these companies are needing. And when it yep. comes to, I love hearing Sophia and, and Lashana speak um, to potential members that, you know, I overhear them at, at times, especially we just had ESX and I heard them a lot on our, um, in our, our booth mm -hmm. and they get into, you know, fuel savings, which you're, you know, do you have any, um, fleet costs for your trucks out there and insurance and all these. And I'm like, Oh God. And, and when you look at what our members are saving and not just on training, it's really a lot. So that's talk to them and let them help you look at your bottom line and see how ESA can save money. No, I, I mean, that's huge. Uh, honestly, I just got this report that Jillian sent me uh, that said that I think that our members versus non-members saved $80, $87,000 compared to non-members last month. It's yeah, in crazy. just a month, right? In yeah. just a month. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, we're actually working on developing some pretty social graphic and we'll get that data out for 
for the whole universe to see pretty soon. But I mean, it's kind of crazy when you actually yeah. can see the numbers and the numbers don't lie that mm -hmm. it legit does uh, help a lot of integrators out there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm hmm. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you again, Michelle, for coming on the Security Nation podcast. And thank you, listeners who tuned in. Make sure to subscribe. We're all on all of the podcasting platforms, excuse me. And uh, the video version is on YouTube. So if you're curious about how ESA membership can power your business, make sure to visit our website at esaweb.org. Take some time to schedule a discovery to call with our membership team, just like Michelle told you, and mm -hmm. you'll be happy you did. And have a great day, security pros. Thanks for joining us.